the next hour and a bit, we're going to be talking with Rocky Erickson. Rocky Erickson, the former lead singer of the 13th Four Elevators, who is now being memorialized with the album Where the Pyramid Meets the Eye. The interview you're about to hear was recorded in July of 1981, back in a time when Rocky used to play live, and it remained unedited in my closet for years, nine years, because I was too frustrated after the interview to do anything with it. Well, with the uh, sudden interest in Rocky and the inaccessibility of Rocky, I thought it was time to bring this thing out of the closet, so to speak. So here you go, about an hour and a piece with Rocky Erickson, a very strange, very weird hour with Rocky Erickson. It happened like this. Let's see, let's just uh, let people know a little bit about yourself. Could you just briefly give people a little biography of yourself? Well, I'm a rock and roll singer. And I like horror movies a lot. <clears throat> I like, uh... I like good TV shows, you know, and, and uh, scary books. And, uh... Delve into evil. You tell them a little bit about their you know, about your musical past. Well, uh, been playing music all my life, and uh, uh, been playing music all my life, and uh, I like to scream a lot when I sing. Yeah, as and, evidence uh, from your I guess blues your a whole lot, evil blues. Yeah. Started out with, uh, I guess, the Spades was one of your first groups, which yeah. turned into the Thirteenth Four Elevators, which right. definitely made their niche right. in Texas music. Uh -huh. And then you disappeared for a while. Yeah. On a, uh, a not too fun matter with uh, Texas law, uh -huh. and uh, came back and appeared with Doug Som in '75. Put out. One of the first records on Mars, I guess, mm -hmm. records, which was Two Headed yeah. Dog, Red Temple Prayer, and. You happen to have that one here? Yes. You do? And Starry Eyes. Why don't you play that Two Headed Dog? That's okay. A, it, it, one thing I like to say about my music is that it's uh, real advanced. I like, I'll write a song, you know, like maybe six years ago, and, uh, um, and it'll take people. I mean, it'll take them maybe six years to understand to be able to understand the first the first level of it you know and then, and then it'll take them a long time to even start grasping how it's going to keep going and uh uh and uh two-headed dog is one of them it was like i controlled the people that were playing on that record with me it's like i controlled them you know it's like when I when I opened my mouth to sing and played my guitar, it made them uh, like they were possessed, like by the devil, and the music started roaring like a like a growling demon from hell. Well, do you think you have this power over people, or was it just the nature of the song? Well, play that song. It might it might blow up your studio <laughs> see see what it does to yeah. the listeners okay here it is this is from 75 i guess yeah right 1975 with uh uh doug som rocky's re-emergence into the dog. rocky erickson with us Music. in the studio and a version of that song which was done almost six years ago and that song is also on his is that on your new album huh is that on the album uh fire demon uh, or evil, evil one, the evil one. Well, uh, what two headed off? dog? Yeah. On the first album. Was that left off of evil one? The one you have right there. Not, not this one, but the other. I don't know for sure okay. if it's going to be on there or not. And that song can be found on, an, and a different version of that song can be found on his album Five Symbols, it's out on CBS Records in the UK. Five Symbols. Right. That's the name of it. I think so. Where does it say that? I thought that's what they what it was in here. No, it's T E O. T E O. I've seen uh, that appeared on the uh, lyric sheet. What is T E O? Uh, well, T E O is uh, is just uh, just the letter CBS put on it. You know. 
just letters and just yeah, right. uh, you were talking about your music being uh, advanced uh -huh. and uh, I have to admit you're doing stuff that's totally different from I think I've heard anybody doing yeah. you're unique in music in fact you know it's evidence that songs you've written uh, five six years ago much less 10 11 years ago mm -hmm. are just people are now waking up to him and going hey uh -huh. this guy's saying is that frustrating no no it's not or is that or you just kind of get a chuckle out of that i get a chuckle out of it <laughs> there's a there's a comic book story called chuckles about this guy that there was these group of boys that used to pull the wings off of bugs and uh and so chuckles got one of the boys and pulled his arms off Rather unsavory tale. Yeah. <laughs> you like uh, horror movies and mm -hmm. monster stuff. Yeah, the horror comics I read are uh, the horror comics I read. You know, like uh, they just uh, had a very short time that they were able to be released. There was about three of them that were able that were able to be released. The kind of comics. The type that, that I, were printed in black and white. Yeah, and, and uh, in black and white and color and. And they, uh, they, uh, they, they, they were only able to print about three of them. Then they went out of. Uh, they were banned, mm. censored and banned, and they weren't a, a bit uh, allowed on the, uh, anywhere to be sold or even, you know, to be, you know, to be sold. And they were uh, stories about a man that would. He had a trophy room of human heads. And it had it had the heads hanging up, and the and the whole wall was just dripped with blood. But it was done in such a realistic and gory, horrifying way that they wouldn't let them be printed. And what about this one man who shot printer's ink into this guy's arm? And uh, it was in black and white. And then this other one about this hand that that uh, this guy stole this guy's ring, and and the police started coming, so he cut off the hand so he could get the ring off and ran and the hand came up into his old apartment the dusty floors and the old apartment and came crawling down and says says he's sweating in his sleep and he says it sounds like a rat but does a rat have five fingers does a rat leave a bloody You're hand tired of music, in the which hall? seems silly because you don't seem to ever tire of music would you ever uh, write monster movies or horror comics yourself well, uh, you know, uh, I, I I would, you know, I, I would, I'd write them. You know, I wrote one story about this thing called Trees, where uh, this guy had invented a plastic, back in the 1800s, he had invented a plastic, a, a thing that was like plastic surgery of our modern day, except it was uh, made it out of wood. He used wood, and so, and he, he found out that it was dangerous, so he quit doing it. And this guy came in and needed surgery, and he said, you either do it or I'll kill your assistant. So he operated on him, and then after he operated on him, he, he heard this moaning sound, and he says, take me down there, you know? And he says, okay. So he took him down there, and there was this lines and lines of men moaning, and they had grown into trees because the, of the putty grew into their skin and turned them into trees, and there was this big hulky monster of a man named Margot watering him with a watering can and this guy just threatened the guy into giving him that same surgery yeah right uh, mm. turn him into trees and the name of the story was trees you wrote a book uh, what was that in 72 you wrote uh, was it a book of poems or what was that called openers openers what sort of stuff did that deal with it uh uh, was a, a book of poems. The book was entitled Openers, and what it meant was it was like my ticket out of a prison. In other words, I wrote it, and it just told them that they were uh, simple-minded idiots, and and it made the world realize, you know, when they saw the poetry written, then they just let me go, and uh, and realize that they could do nothing about it, you know. Yeah. What did you do exactly? Well, I just used lots of Nazi tactics. See, like well, I think uh, in, in Nazi, see, in Nazi, Nazism, they 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 had uh, they had uh, 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 
lampshades made out of human skin and couches made out of human skin. And if a person, and then because, like, and then, it, see, like, when I was caught, you know, then uh, I, I knew to tell them that I was, you know, that to tell them things, uh, I just told them, I said, listen, I, I feel like, uh, in other words, I just, I just uh, convinced them that I was insane so I could go to a, to a, uh, to a mental home instead of a prison. Yeah, this was on the uh, the marijuana charge, I guess. Yeah, right. What was that, right. 69 or something? Yeah, I probably would have been in prison about four years, you know. Yeah, that's... They used to send you up for a long time. Yeah, they wanted that to. Sort of stuff. So you uh, managed to make them think you were crazy. Yeah, right. And then once you got there, you wrote yeah. a book, and they could see the book, and mm -hmm. uh, I guess you had some legal help that was being paid for from the book, proceeds yeah. of the book, and they got you out, and here you are today. Uh, yeah, they were real simple-minded people. It was, it was real easy to make them believe that I was crazy, you know, and and uh, 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 and then I, uh, and but there was a bunch, there was a slip-up, you know, uh, there was a slip-up. I mean, they were real simple-minded people, you know, so... Uh, so the, the whole slip-up, you know, sent me to prison. The Edge. Do you think your music being as uh, as strange and oriented around evil and all this has influenced anybody. I mean, what, I, well, what I'm, I'm sure saying is, is, you, is know. you know, people have, have said, you know, well, watching all this horrible stuff on TV has influenced, you know, young kids to do this sort of stuff, uh -huh. you know, weird things. And do you think your music has influenced any uh, kids, say, or folks my age into doing yeah. strange things? Well, you know... Uh it's strange because, uh, see, I, I've been into horror all my life, you know. Yeah. Uh, ever since I was the smallest, smallest baby. In other words, since I was born. And uh, few people uh, want to look into horror, you know. But I'm sure it has influenced people. Now, if they want to get into my sick mind, that's another thing. You know, if they can read the same things I do, you know. Yeah. I read into some of the censored things that... Uh, that have been tampered with, you know, because as I say, see, since I was 12 years old, they censored that those three comics, and then they had one movie that was uh, uh, the creature with the atom brain, and that, and that, and now, like all the other horror movies, all uh, they 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 come out in little toy form. The creature with the atom brain is like a toy, the one they show now. It's the same movie, that, but it's had the guts. It's, no, it's of... it's not even the same movie. It, the, the only thing that's the same about it is is the title. Hmm. And, and then it and then and because see the movie in the real movie, the one that they may have just showed one time that I was the only one to see because I am who I am, yeah. the evil one. Well, like uh, when you walked in and sat down and the movie started. Well, if you hadn't been me, you'd want to get up and leave because. As soon as they flashed it on the screen, and the music, and they showed the first creature. As soon as the movie started, the first creature came out, and he stopped. He stopped a car and got out of a car. And he, uh, and you could, when you saw his face, you could smell the fluid in his brain. Well, you want to play a uh, creature with the atom brain now? Let sure, the folks yeah. Hear that? That's got the. Uh, uh, the portion I think is is really fun now. See in this. The, the the version they show of the creature of the atom brain is good because who I mean that little it's a it's a you know it's good, and I have two chords and that represents the old version and the new version you know. Okay. But that one version, the uncensored version, you can't buy. You can't buy you know, and you really have to hold on to your seat. I mean, it's horror. You know, they they won't show it. You know, they don't show that horror anymore, and they won't. They won't sell it in comic books. They won't. They won't show it on the movie, and and they won't. Uh, and you can't. The Adam Brain, Rocky Erickson in the studio with us tonight, and talking about monsters and demons and evil ones, and of course his music, which deals so much with those that uh, they're almost one and the same. I really enjoy the little uh, scene you have in the middle with uh, McGraw and all that, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Uh, well, and, and right one, out of the movie. yeah, one guy. Uh, it was into uh, 
This says, Captain Harris, good to see you again. At the last, when the, yeah. the poli- they turn the police into one of the creatures, and he comes in and he and they say, good to see you. He breaks into the jail, and McGraw, and then one of the guys are sitting there and says, uh, being with him is like being in solitaire. And that that that, that was uh, that they were communist uh, Kennedy assassinators. If you were into, if you got into the philosophy of the creature with the atom brain, well, do you consider yourself a demonic possessed evil person, or yes, you really do? Yes, I do. Okay, your uh, my religion. Well, how can I say this? A lot of people have an image of you because uh, the press on you has been so uh, scattered. You know, there's been very few articles with you by people that uh, can actually sit down and talk like us. They've maybe never heard of you. Mm -hmm. And they'll go, Rocky, I understand you say you're an alien. And you go, yes, of course I'm an alien. I'm Mm -hmm. from Mars, you know. Mm -hmm. And they go, really? And they, you know, believe every bit of it. Yeah, well, well, you know, you uh, you can give people credit uh, because... uh, a lot of people won't won't talk about something unless they are with somebody that is intelligent, yeah. interesting. Are there two different Rockies? Are the, is there the the Rocky that uh, great fan of horror movies, and then there's the uh, Rocky, which is the stage persona who is, you know, from another world and all this. Well, you know, uh, I married a monster from outer space, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I might be the mon- I, I might be the monster, and I married a monster from outer space. They're really strange scenes that these police, you know, come and stop this car, you know, mm-hmm. and then you look in their eyes, and they're monsters from outer space too. Well, you could be a monster, right? Oh, I am. Yeah. <laughs> Just ask the man who owns one, right? What are we going to see out of you in the future? What what sort of material are you? Gonna, well, what are you going to talk about? Well, see, I'm I'm a I'm I'm into this thing of uh, see you know you might ask me well where do these love songs come from you know where do the love songs come from if you're so gory yeah well uh, it's like uh, if you deal with the witchcraft trials Joan of Arc and uh, uh, Anne Bolden and and all those yeah. witches all those girls and people that were tried back in in the, in the in the times when they uh, yeah. had the witchcraft trials. But when you're possessed that way, then love songs come out. They take the form of, 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 of those people that were tried in Salem. It's just like saying it's a form of possession. Do you have sympathy for monsters in, in the movies? Oh, I always do, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 you know, I, if I cried, I would have cried when Rodan died, you know. Yeah. You side with the monsters then. I always eat them do, up, yeah. Eat them up, tear yeah, up New York. Yeah, and there, there was another movie that was real scary. I forgot about that. I don't know what happened to it, too. It was showed maybe once or twice, and it was called The Day the World Ended. And it was about uh, uh, radiation from an atomic bomb covered the Earth, and, uh, and uh, it turned people into these... They were red, and uh, they, they had red cracked skin and three eyes and horns and it turned the radiation turned people into that monster and what happened is it started raining and killed them because the pureness of the rain killed the monster always from the radiation always something simple like that yeah does it nature wins uh, out and beats down the monster some it's easier like in yeah. Dracula just the sun <clears throat> yeah in fact, speaking of the Drac- Dracula, you have Night of the Vampire, mm-hmm. where you have on St. Swithin's Day, he was born. Yes. You know anybody else that was born on St. Swithin's Day? No. Oh, I thought yeah, I thought I had heard that you were. Oh, yes, I was. Yes, mm-hmm. I was born on St. Swithin's Day, yes. When is that? It, there's le- St. Swithin's Day is July 15th, and um, it, it's legend. If, if it rains on St. Swithin's Day, it'll rain 30 days and 30 nights afterwards. It's a real spooky legend. A lot of people won't talk about it. They'll get upset and leave the room if we talk about it. You'll talk about it. The Edge. What scares you? Is there anything that scares you? I'm real strange, you know. I I go for horror, and then I go for it more. I can just, I, you know, I can't get enough of it. Are you, you know? are you interested in horror stuff now that is much 
weirder, much more frightening than you thought ten years ago you could ever be into? Well, it, it's like horror has, it's like different shades of blood, you know? Horror has different shades, is like different shades of blood because the day he came home, Halloween, uh, that music was uh, so loud that uh, your body was com total music instead of a body. You know, your body, it. yeah, you're, yeah, you were a, a block of music, like a block of ice. Instead of a block of ice, you were a block of music. In the the day he came home, the night he came home, Halloween, and that's terrifying. It was really terrifying. That's some really good uh, suspense building devices in the movie yeah, as well. Yeah, this piano just kept playing through the whole thing. It's ding 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 ding. About this guy who escaped from a mental hospital. And, uh, and he never seemed to die either. I mean, you would yeah, think he yeah. was dead. And, and I, I wrote my own ending to that. See, it's it, I, this ending that I wrote to it's real strange because after I tell it to you, then then you'll look and you'll read the ending to Halloween in the book, and then and it's and then you'll put it down and you'll say, I could have sworn I saw Rocky's ending because the way I ended it says, it was the boogeyman after all. And you and you swear that that's what the book says is that it well, was after, the boogeyman after after it. seeing the movie you almost you almost have to believe that because uh, nothing would kill kill that person yeah I know and that just yeah that makes that makes a lot more sense than you know no it was just this escape middle yeah, yeah like right a, an easy out on your your music on the album seems to vary quite a bit you've got uh, things like okay. You've got White Faces and Night of the Vampire that are kind of uh, ballads. They move a little slow. And then you've got Stand for the Fire Demon with the talking break in the middle. Uh -huh. And then you go with something like Don't Shake Me Lucifer, which almost sounds like, uh, well, I'm sure it has nothing to do with Stu Cook being producer on this album, but it almost sounds like something out of Credence. You know, it's sort of a, a boogie, boogie rock thing. What sort of music influences have you had to do songs of all these different styles and yet they all sound rocky they all sound <clears throat> well, like you you know don't shake me lucifer is uh was written to the devil see he you know the the, the devil it, uh so it's like uh it was to the philosophy of not getting frisk you know of not getting busted and that's, that's what don't zombie. shake me don't yeah. sh uh, <laughs> that's written through the movie I walked with a zombie the lyrics to the song are I walked with a zombie yeah last night uh, over and over and over and over and over and over and over why yeah well uh, they 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 uh, didn't tell me they were going to put that one on the album see the words are I walked with a zombie see it's I walked with a zombie I walked with B zombie I walked with C zombie I walked with D zombie I walked with A zombie that's the real words and they just kept they just they took it they, they didn't tell me they were going to put it on there was a tape there that i had just uh, it was me doing i walked with a zombie over and over in the studio and they took it and put it on the album what is the a b c d uh, what's what's the significance of the a zombie b zombie c zombie well uh i walked with the zombie i walked with I the zombie demons, i think is, is would probably be What's going to be your epitaph in in years in the years down the road? Everybody's going to think of Rocky, and they go, "Yes, he thought of demons. Demons. That's very real to you. Mm -hmm. Demons and gremlins and goblins. And, and, what about uh, strange things that twist and crawl? Little girl that tread on love. Little orphan Annie. Little orphan Annie is yeah. is strange. Oh yes, the little orphan Annie is very strange. Why is that? That's the so goblins sweet. are going to get you if you don't watch out. Don't you remember that line? No, I don't. I don't the remember. goblins are going to get you if you don't watch out. Goes, uh, little orphan Annie, come to our house to stay. Chase the chickens off the porch and and dust the curds and whey. And after the supper things is done and all the kitchen things was done, we sits around the the evening fire and has the mostest fun of listening to the witch's tales that Annie tells about and the goblins that get you if you don't watch out. And once there was a little boy who wouldn't say his prayers, and when he went to bed at night, away upstairs with the stars. His mammy heard him holler, and his daddy heard him bawl, but when he turned the kivers down, he wasn't there at all. And once there was a little girl who'd, who'd all had laugh and grin, 
and make fun of old folks and all her blood and kin. And just as she kicked her heels and turned to run and hide, there were two great big black things standing by her side. And the goblins that get you if you don't watch out. And there's another one about this little girl that tread on a loaf. and She walked on a loaf of bread and turned into the most evil thing, thing you could ever imagine with creatures every day that never stand over his box. I think you know, you have the word evil, and from it manifest Pandora's box, all the creatures and of hell. All manner of and, strange and, things. And uh, evil fire. You've got a song that you had done in, uh, in 76 that appeared mm -hmm. on Virgin Records overseas and Rhino Records here called Bermuda. Yeah. Uh, watch out for the Bermuda Triangle. Mm -hmm. And all this. Well, see, I saw a movie that, that would show photographs of these men... And it was like uh, it was like somebody had taken a marking pen and, and marked an X over their pictures, their photographs, because they were never never seen again. No telling what kind of creature lives out there that reaches down and picks up things. Is it a creature or a oh, force? Sure. Or what do yeah, you think? Yeah, it's a creature, and a, a force from a creature, and uh, uh, that lives out there in Bermuda with the devil, and. Uh, Devil's Playground is what it is. If you had a... If it's you, Strange Love, you know, Dr. Strange Lover from... I mean, yeah, and from Russia with love. If, say, uh, your company uh, or management got you a gig in mm -hmm. Bermuda. Yeah. And you were... They said, okay, Rocky, get on this plane and you're going to fly to Bermuda. Would you do that, knowing well, what's out there? you know, I, I'd go to Bermuda by myself, I think. Because if I didn't, you know, I, I, I'd get out there and I think... There'd be there'd be a, a time lapse where the person with me would just disappear and get, and go into a nothing world, you know. You think you would be uh, safe then? Oh, sure. Going would. through that. Is that because you you know what? Well, what's let's see. There's there, there's books like the Theban and uh, Dark Hand and uh, Father Yig that if you bring up these people's names, then uh, it's just like Bermuda. You'll disappear. And there's certain books that are like that too, the Theban and the the Mysteries of the Worm, and books like that of the occult that they just print the ne the title of the book and they don't have any record of it. It's like the Curse of the Demon, Stonehenge. They don't have any record of Stonehenge. They just have the the form of it, the outline of Stonehenge. And it's like uh, Bermuda's like that. It's like uh, certain books and Father Yig and Dark Han. If you bring them up, you'll disappear. On ninety four point five, The Edge and uh, George Kimmock here in the midst of the rock and roll alternative. Keep those tape decks rolling. It can only get weirder. If you could visit any place, mm -hmm. you know, you've got a ticket to anywhere. Where yeah. would you go to visit? Well, I'd like to go to Bermuda, and I'm real. My one of my favorite places is South America. Because of uh, all the shrunken heads they have there, the uh, undiscovered tribes, yeah, and right, all that. Uh huh. I had heard um, in several of your songs you have mention of. Well, you've got a new song, Sputnik. You've got uh, the interpreter, which deals with uh, Moscow. Comes up. Moscow comes up in in many of your songs. Does, <clears throat> does that uh -huh. city hold any special meaning to you? Moscow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, there's a, uh, see, Moscow, you're never supposed to leave Moscow. See, you never leave Moscow. If you leave Moscow, if you, if you leave the idea of communism, if you leave the ideas of, of Russia, Moscow, the Kremlin, then, then you're not a communist or you're not a Russian. You're not a Moscow veteran. You're not a, a Kremlinite, you know, if you leave that, see. So you never leave Moscow. See, Moscow is uh, so advanced; it stays advanced, you know. And then Kremlin, the Kremlin keeps records of Moscow. It's a real heavy country, you know. It's a real heavy country. Hey, it's a good country. I love Russia. I couldn't make it without Russia. Would you like to live there sometime? Well, I don't know if I'd be too weird for them or not, you know. I'd, oh, maybe you could. There, I think there I'd be proud of victory and day in the life of Ivan Denisovich. Let's talk about another song here. Cold Night for Alligators. It's a cold night for alligators. It's a cold night for dogs. Yeah. When men turn into alligators at night. Or yeah, it was, uh, uh, it was written to the alligator people, the movie The, the Alligator People. I, you, you, you have 
access to movies I have never heard of, the Alligator People. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so people can listen to this song as a soundtrack yeah, uh -huh. for the movie. Yeah. What what happens in the song, Cold Night for Alligators? Well, it's about the abduction of Charles Parker, I mean of Calvin Parker and Charles Hickson. And, and it terrified them so much that they passed out and floated on, aboard their flying saucer. So the song is written in the key of fear. Okay. Let's listen. To, let's it's written on the idea that the same people that would abduct somebody in the key of fear, total fear, which would result in death by fright, would be my friends. Because Calvin Parker and Charles Hickson means from a ray gun char less and be a less hick erickson son erickson and see a loving dad see a loving paul r-k-e-r -E rocky kindred erickson and see a loving planet always roger kindred erickson rocky kindred erickson okay well let's Talking let's listen to that that is also Demon Man himself, Rocky Erickson. And Rocky, have you? I've heard somebody at uh, one of your recent performances describe you as the king of creature guitar. Because you do tend to have a distinctive guitar sound yeah. on stage. And he said I had creature guitar, huh? He said creature, the king of creature guitar, the inventor of creature guitar. Really? Where'd you ever learn to play guitar? You just pick it up on your own? Or do you ever take lessons or anything like that? No, I taught myself. Just taught yourself to mm -hmm. play? Yeah. And you've been writing songs, I guess, since, oh gosh, 63, 64? Or are you, did you write some stuff before that? Well, uh, I, I'm, you know, I, I've been writing songs a lot all my life, you know. And when I was really little, I used to write songs about frogs and things. I, um... Uh, confess a weakness for a lot of your tunes such as uh, well you're going to miss me as a classic because uh, it's got the uh, I guess that's the first exposure a lot of people had to the uh, uh, what is now called creature guitar uh -huh. and the rocky scream wail mm -hmm. at the first of it yeah and then you've done some other stuff which is seems totally opposite that like uh, the one the click covered uh, uh, splash I've seen one before, yeah. no splash one yeah Right. Uh, you just run the gamut of all these all these different types of songs. Yeah. Uh-huh. And you know a group called DMZ. The, I think they're from Detroit, is that huh? right? A Detroit uh, band, or? Uh, did, did, um, uh, You're Gonna Miss Me. Boston. Hmm. From Boston. From Boston. That song is probably one of the best-remembered underground tunes uh -huh. from 67 yeah right. would you prefer your music to be considered underground music or would you like to be on the top 40 charts depends if it's underground in bermuda or oh. underground in hell <laughs> yeah <laughs> Music is evil to me. See, God said any man that does anything but worship God is evil. Well, that would make See, drinking your Coca-Cola evil. That's right. That's what it is. It is evil. See, there is such a thing that if you even read a story by Hans Christian Andersen, that that would be evil. Well, that's See, it's the same thing. See, music is the same thing as a play or the same thing as gambling see whereas I don't gamble I just brought gamble gambling because I say gambling's evil see mm -hmm. I mean not evil but they say that gambling is ungodly so do you play music because it's evil or because you don't want to worship God or what no God's a good friend of mine but I was just telling you you asked me that question yeah. and that was the only way I could answer it because it's so okay. far out to explain it's inconceivable to a lot of to a uh, a person that wouldn't be into horror's minds unless they were able to be intelligent enough to to uh, uh, communicate with someone that was a genius. Okay. I'm going to try to sort that out. <laughs> You're a very cryptic person, Rocky. You I know that. From the crypt. <laughs> from the crypt is true. Let's say it's the year 2000. 
Mm-hmm. Maybe Rocky has given up his guitar to write movies mm-hmm. for Hollywood. And somebody st- stops me on the street corner and they say, <clears throat> this Rocky Erickson cat used to play music. What yeah. was he like? How would you want to be remembered? How do you want to be remembered as a performer, writer, musician? I guess, you know, that uh, when you think of me, you think of South America and the smell of, of shrinking fluid when you shrink a little tiny head with the stitches over its mouth. Think of the aloneness of fear. Think of me as the sick eye of eye. Rocky, it's been a real unusual experience. You have kept us in calculated hysteria. And Thank you. More music on the Rock and Roll Alternative. <laughs>